Meterpreter, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. This time, we're gonna take a little bit slower approach. We're gonna slow down a bit and, and, and look at just what is the core features of, of Meterpreter. And Meterpreter is, is more than just a Windows uh, uh, thing or payload. Um, there's are actually a lot more Meterpreters out there. There's Java Meterpreter, PHP Meterpreter. We've actually gone through some of these. Um, but um, one of the biggest um, emails that I get is, it says core lib standard API failed to load. What, what, why am I, why have I, why don't I have any commands or what, what can I do or why does, is it broken? Do I have to do it again? So um, we've decided to go into some of the basic commands or core commands of, of Meterpreter. Um, that way we can kind of show you what you can do in certain scenarios where that's core lib kind of didn't work. So first off is the background command. We've already used this quite a bit. Once you're in a session, you can background that session. Um, BG list, BG um, kill, and BG run is you can actually run scripts or, or post modules in the background. So you can make it so that um, if you have a key logger or, or, uh, or other um, post module or script that you want to just keep running on a specific session, you can throw it in the background. Now that's not to be confused with the background command. These are background jobs on a session. Um, then you have channel. And Meterpreter itself is all channelized. So all of the things that it does is, is based on threads and channels and communication pro, um, uh, back and forth using these channels. So um, if you type in channel, you'll get a list of the channels that are currently open. Um, you can close the channel with close. Detach is a specific one for reverse HTTP and reverse HTTPS based payloads. Um, this is because there is no um, there's no uh, specific way that Meterpreter knows that, um, that it can close or, or exit. I mean, you do have the exit command, but then it's, it, it's actually sending um, callbacks back and forth. Um, so detach is actually a way that you can, you can detach a uh, session and see if it comes back to see if it's still alive. Um, disable and enable Unicode encoding. That's just for if you are working against a um, a non-US or non-English based uh, operating system that, that helps. Um, I believe it's all automatically turned on, um, but you can disable it if, it, if you're running into some issues. Um, exit, that exits the interpreter session. Info shows information about the post module you're running. Interact, interacts with those sessions. IRB is, is really cool because um, we've actually talked about IRB in the past where you used um, the interpreter for Ruby uh, to look at different code inside of the MSF console, but this is in the context of Meterpreter. So if there's a file you want to open and, and um, for some reason uh, standard API or, or some of the things didn't load correctly or, or you want to um, get down in the weeds and try and fix things, you can actually open a, a Ruby console for that and, and have that Meterpreter session object right there for you. Load is the one that I wanted to talk about the most about. So load actually allows you to load extensions. So use or load, um, people kind of use them interchangeable um, because it's an alias, will load an extension. So if core lib standard API did not load correctly on your interpreter session for whatever reason, you can actually say load std API and it should um, be able to say successful load or, or it failed again. And that can be a number of reasons. That could just be a, a failed um, payload injection or, or something that just didn't work correctly on the outside, or it was operating too fast for the payload to work. And if you do a load, it, uh, it'll then get the full standard API correctly. And then you have migrate. Of course, this is migrating from one process to another. Um, as far as I know, this only works on Windows. Quit terminates just like exit. Um, read, actually you can, so if you type in shell or execute um, dash IC um, CMD, you're dropping to a shell, you're actually creating a, a communication channel. Um, if you want to, for whatever reason, read or write to that communication channel, 
without dropping to that shell. So say you wanted to write a DIR um, enter to a CMD sh uh, uh, session. Then you wanted to read that data out. No, I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. Um, then resource allows you to use um, interpreter-based resource files. So if we've talked about a lot about MSF console resource files, but you can actually use resource files inside of an interpreter. So if there's a bunch of post modules, like we just talked about um, a couple segments ago, that you want to run in succession, you can actually um, create your own interpreter resource file and, and run it from there. Then run, you can obviously run a script or, or post module, use, again, that's load, and then finally write data. So these are all of the core commands, and we're going to be getting into all of the other extensions that are available. Um, these are all the core commands that should be there no matter what interpreter you have going. Um, obviously, migrate to the one exception to that. So what do you think? Email msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Thanks again for supporting the show, and if you, if you want to support us even more, you can go to hakshop.com, enter coupon code MUBIX, and get free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until next time, I'm MUBIX, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Thank you.